Hi friends, how are you? Welcome back to my channel for a brand new series that I'm hoping to start over here, maybe once or twice a month that I am so excited for. So I wanted to sit down and first, before getting into the video, introduce this concept to you guys so that you know kind of what to expect. I'm calling this series Michelin Possible. This is where I essentially, as a home cook, try to take very elevated, fine dining food principles that I have no idea what the heck I'm doing and just experiment and see what I can do at home. Let's commence this experiment. Go team. I'm asking for trouble. <laughs> so if this fails, I gotta go back to the store. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's several different concepts within this series I want to do. One is similar to what I did for Jordy's birthday where I just create a menu from scratch and try to do like a six course fine dining menu on my own. I'm filming one of those next week. But this one, I also want to do a restaurant edition. And this is where I basically go and dine at a very nice fine dining restaurant, maybe sometimes Michelin, maybe sometimes not, and get inspired by their courses and then choose one and try my best to blindly recreate it at home. So welcome, I hope you enjoy. Let's jump into the Michelin meal that I had that is going to inspire today's video. We went to a restaurant here in Oceanside called Valle, which is a one-star Michelin, kind of like contemporary Mexican cuisine with um, a focus on California produce. But there's a lot of seafood at this restaurant, but this wasn't a normal dining experience at Valle because they were having essentially a chef's friends dinner series. And they brought down a two-star Michelin chef from San Francisco. I think that his restaurant is California. The two of them collaborated on an eight course tasting menu. So you have no say over what you're getting. Chef just brings out whatever they have made for that night. This wasn't considered one of the courses, but they brought out a few mousse bouches, just little tiny tastes, which are actually always my favorite part. But we got this fake oyster. It was like a vegan take on an oyster. They used an oyster plant, seaweed broth, and then barrage flour, which we tried in France, which kind of tastes like cucumber. It's an edible flour. Then they had, they basically blended chicharrones into a broth with a cheese foam on top. So it was this like pork rind, thick, cheesy broth in this little cup. And then the last thing that they had was a little black masa chip. It had caviar, jalapeno mousse, cilantro flour. It was really good. Then the first course, this was like a red masa and Dungeness crab little kind of cake situation. It had hominy. I couldn't quite figure out all of the things going on in this. That's all I kind of could pick up on. The second course, this was lobster claw, smoked trout roe, orange supreme, and then an agua chile. Third course was so interesting. They, they gave us this wooden spoon to eat it, which was uh, a little bit hard to cut into this scallop veil. Basically, they took raw scallops, pulverized it, made it into like more of a gelatinous texture, cut them into giant circles, and laid that as a veil over this dish of zucchini and the white part from a cacao pod that were like sliced into thin ribbons. And then there was some sort of a dressing. It was like maybe a citrus lime vinaigrette sort of dressing. Next was a mushroom dish. It was a lion's mane mushroom and it had a caramelized onion puree. And then they took onion and burned it and made basically onion charcoal. And then there was a mole negro, which has 25 different ingredients in it. And it took them three days to cook this mole. But then this next course, was my favorite course. It was so good. It was a fish taco, basically a fried fish taco, but they had black cod that was battered, they said, in a mezcal rice flour. And then it had a roasted poblano salsa, but then the dollops on top, one of them was like a sweet corn puree and one was a mole. Then we had a course that was like gizzard. What do you call that? Chicken you know, that was fried. And then they had this asparagus that was wrapped in zucchini and it had this like poblano avocado puree. Second to last was lobster tacos. They basically just brought out full lobsters with several different accoutrements and house-made tortillas to make your own little taco. And then the dessert, it was a corn tamale that had chocolate and hazelnut. And then it had a vanilla creme glaze with a hazelnut corn ice cream, which I thought was really good with a, like a corn crumble and a gold flake. We get to the end and I think truly my favorite thing here was this battered mezcal rice flour corn tortilla taco. And that's what we are going to try to do today. 
We are going to head to the store. We're gonna to try to break down the ingredients based off the flavor profile, brainstorm what ingredients I need to get, go to the store, stock up, come home and figure it out. excited that we found everything we need at one single stop including local black cod which makes sense because i'm sh i mean they say it on their website by i tries to focus on local ingredients so that was the one local catch at the market today which is so great what i'm thinking in terms of a plan is starting with the three sauces first because those can sit so the salsa perhaps the mole but i did find this I went ahead and got mole negro just in case. Because <sighs> looking at the photo, I think it was the, it, it was a dark mole. So this looks the most similar, but I'm gonna try to do the salsa, the corn puree, and the mole first, then tortillas, and then finishing with the fish so it is as fresh as possible. And I got two types of corn. This was local and I thought it was interesting because the puree in the photo was pretty light. So I got some white corn, it looks like this but then i also just got sweet yellow corn because it was so sweet and then <laughs> never bought mezcal before in my life I chose this one because it was cheapest a little afraid of starting potentially a kitchen fire by mixing hot oil and 40 percent alcohol <laughs> and a whole huge pound and a third of our cod, gonna put that in the fridge. I think first thing for us is to wash and prep our produce and grill vegetables. I want to grill all the vegetables that will be going in the salsa. I want to grill all the vegetables that will be going in the mole. And then I want to grill the corn. I could broil it, but I feel like grilling it will get slightly more depth of like an interesting char flavor. Go team. Okay, we got all of our grilled veggies with hopefully a good amount of char. Wow, my left hand is weak. I've lost my ooh, wrist strength for my server days. Okay, we made it. <laughs> Let's start with the corn. I think the key to this part of the dish will be getting it as fatty and sweet as possible without it being too weird. I think I'm gonna use a mix of both types of corn, the white and the sweet. And then obviously a lot of butter, cream, some condensed milk. The thing that might be the hardest about this is getting a consistency that feels right because it was pretty smooth. So I think I'm gonna blend it and see if I can get it really smooth from blending alone or if we're gonna have to push it through some sort of a strainer or something. I don't want it to be too thin because I want it to hold its shape. And I kind of want to taste that before doing any condensed milk. Let's just get a baseline taste. Wow, actually it's so smooth. I might not need to put this through anything. Wow, it is already very sweet. You could definitely taste like sugary sweet. Like I swear it was condensed milk because I used to love condensed milk as a kid. So I do think it still needs sweetness. I'm not gonna start with a ton, but I want to do this and salt because salt brings out sweetness as well. I'm gonna start with like half a tablespoon ish. Start with a big pinch of flaky salt. I don't want to jinx anything, but like, that was too easy. But I'm just gonna pour some in a piping bag, throw it in the fridge, see how she sets. And this is how I will do the little dollops like they did, or at least the tent. One thing down. Now let's try the salsa. I just realized I maybe should have done a method where I also could have roasted garlic because we don't want raw garlic and I didn't think about that until just now. So I just 
Got some cloves, oil. I'm just gonna pop it in my little toaster oven. Let's see. Should I bake or broil? While we're waiting on that garlic, I'm just going to get the skin off these tomatoes. I learned this trick in school. It might be common knowledge, but I didn't know where if you score a little X on the top of the tomato before you introduce it to heat, it makes it so easy to pull the skin off. I have always kept the skin on my tomatoes, but learned about the importance of mouthfeel. I do feel like their salsa was very, very, very fine. I actually think maybe they blended it. So I think I'm going to blend this salsa. I know that like, I've always grown up eating pretty chunky salsa that I think was just very roughly chopped. But I think to try to get closer to the dish, I'm gonna try putting it in the blender. I forgot the onion. I wanted to grill the onion. We have all of our peppers, our jalapeno, poblano, our tomato, our habanero. Hope I don't regret that. I like lime, but I'm gonna to try to resist my own desires and try to just get it as close to theirs as possible. Do you think that an onion will blend? I mean, I'm sure it will. This is two onions. I'm gonna just use one of them. Cilantro. I'm just gonna pull some off and also keep the stems because I've been validated in the classes I've been taking that the stems have a lot of the good flavor. So I'm gonna do a handful of that. Five of these cloves of garlic. I'm gonna do some oil because theirs really was fatty and also I feel like this is gonna need some liquid to blend. And then I wanna start with a lot of salt. I'm glad it blended. It's looking a lot more green than theirs. I wonder if I did too much poblano. But if the taste, if we can get the taste there, then I'm not mad. Okay, I have no idea if this is really spicy. It is quite spicy, actually. I shouldn't have done the habanero. I don't think that theirs had that. Huh. The best solution I can come up with is I got this tomato paste for our attempt at our own mole. This will at least help the color. And I don't think I need that much for the mole, but I actually don't really know. I'm gonna use like half of this in here. It didn't really change the color. Let's see if it changed the flavor though. Wait, that helped so much more than I thought it would. Either that or like my last bite, I just got a giant piece of pepper or something. Taste, texture, I'm pleased, color. What are you gonna do about it, you know? Wow, we got a whole lifetime supply of very blended salsa. The good thing is I have this, it's kind of like a cheat sheet to try to get close to this flavor. I haven't had mole a ton because it's not always celiac safe. In fact, a lot of the time it's not. I think it's thickened with regular wheat flour a lot of the time. This one is safely gluten-free that I bought. It's pretty sweet. This actually is definitely sweeter than the one at the restaurant. I think that they probably made it less sweet to balance how sweet the corn was right next to it. The couple of recipes that I found that did it like the cheat way, the quicker way, they actually used almond butter, which I always thought it was like peanut. I guess you can use any nut, but I'm gonna try almond butter. I'm gonna pull all of our ingredients together and we'll do one more blend taste trial of something. I got chicken and beef stock, cause I don't know. I think vegetable stock is technically correct. I actually want to do all the beef and a little of the chicken. Oh yeah, it's getting thick. The flour is working. Actually, I do want this mole to be pretty thick so that it also can dollop. So maybe I just start with the beef and add the chicken later if needed. We still have dry ingredients like the cocoa and we have thick ingredients like the nut butter, but I'm gonna blend this before returning it to the pan to add those things and then season, what am I forgetting? Tomato paste. That might be it, actually. Please don't splash on me. Please don't splash on me. Please don't splash on me. I need to buy an apron. I literally don't think I own one. I'm gonna do like two heaping tablespoons. This is a drippy almond butter. I'm gonna do it now. I hope that's okay. Add a tablespoon-ish of tomato paste. This is 
about two-ish tablespoons of cocoa powder, but I feel like we're gonna wanna add more. And I also feel like it is already thick because it needs to reduce, so I am gonna add more broth. Let's give it a taste. This is 0% sweet, which I do really like. It's a lot more like the one in the restaurant. Theirs was really not sweet at all. I'm gonna just keep whisking, because she seems temperamental. So as you can see from this photo that I took of it, there is, I think it's sauteed poblano. So I saved one poblano, set it aside. It almost kind of seemed like they were very thinly cut. So that'll be pretty easy to knock out and set aside. Tortilla time. <sighs> I'm nervous. I feel like it's so simple that I'm gonna mess it up. You know what I mean? It's just masa and water. Look at how pretty this masa flour is that I found. This is white corn masa. The instructions are on the back of the bag. So I really have no excuse. It says two really packed cups of this and then two not so full cups of warm water. And then you just mix by hand. I should probably take off all of my rings. Okay. I mean, it's somewhat incorporated. I got a book, some wax paper is ready to go. I went ahead and did a few of them so I could leave each tortilla on its wax paper. Let's see if this works. Roll into a ping pong size ball. I don't know, it's feeling a little crumbly. I wonder if it needs a little more water. It's about ping pong size, right? I feel like this one's gonna crumble. My gut's saying it needs more water. Go ahead and press it. I think I want bigger tortillas than that. That's like street size, but it actually pressed. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, this one's a little bit bigger. I wanna get it a little bit thinner and larger and I can't really do it with the weight of my body. Well, closer to the size I want. I just want it thinner and more spread out. It's gonna be a learning curve, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know, it's pretty thick. <sighs> Sitting down for a sec, cause I need a break and also, I wanna test the first couple tortillas to see how the consistency and taste is before continuing on. This one is the one that I went ahead and used the um, rolling pin on. And this one is a little bit thicker and it was my first attempt. I actually feel like the thinner one might be the way to go, but let's first see if this, okay, this holds. I would like it thinner. So I might go ahead and use the rolling pin method even though I know that that's probably a sin. Yeah, I feel like they need to be thinner. I'm gonna keep playing around with it and then I'll be back for us to do fish and plating. Oh my gosh, I got my first poof. I don't even know if you can see, I got my first air pocket. <gasps> it's inflating! I've done it, I've passed the tortilla test! Oh my God! Look at how good that looks. Wow, just 45 minutes of practice and we finally got a decent tortilla that puffed up. Great, saving that one for our final plate for sure. Okay, so I'm really racking my head around how to do this fish. I think I'm gonna try to kind of treat it like a beer batter to where there's just one thing to dip this fish into instead of like a dry dredge, whatever it's called, where there's like a wet and then a dry. Although it was really kind of crispy on the outside. Looking at it, there was definitely a texture of like, to me, they said rice, but to me, doesn't it look like there's like kind of a corn flake, corn meal? So it could be rice and corn. I got both. I think I'm gonna try both. I'm basically gonna do like a beer batter, but with mezcal. I'll cut the fish into like strips, salt and pepper that, dip it in the flour, fry it, see what we get. I'm looking up just a normal beer batter recipe for kind of reference points for amounts of liquid to uh, flour. And it says one cup of all-purpose flour, one and a third cups of beer, one egg. This will be iteration one. We'll see if it works. Two shots of vodka. Blah, 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 blah. Oh my gosh. Is this gonna catch on fire? I'm trying to think of what seasoning. I might just do salt, pepper, garlic. 
Actually, I feel like the smokiness of paprika will kind of balance the weird smokiness of the alcohol in a, in a better way. That looks like a good consistency to me. Let's all say pray that this works and tastes decent. Okay, that wasn't bad. Um, three to four minutes on each side. I don't know. Okay, all right. Oh, all right, okay. Looking at the first round of fish that's almost done, I do think I wanna try a version where I go from the batter to a, do you call this a dredge? To see if I can get a little bit thicker of a crust on this. Okay, here's version one, just battered. Here's version two, dipped into cornmeal after. I kind of want somewhere between the two. Actually, sorry, let me check the internal temp of this real quick, this biggest one. Um, I kind of want somewhere between the two, so I'm gonna do version three. This is mostly rice flour with a little bit of the remainder of um, corn. But then we'll have three different textures to choose from. Guys, it's the best time. It's plating time. I actually might use my first iteration. Should have gone with my gut. I'm um, gonna just kind of heat back up all the things that we've been prepping all day. We started cooking around one. It's five. <laughs> We're four hours into the cooking part of this, not including the groceries and the prep. So I say we plate. I'm gonna do two plates, um, try my best to make it look just like the restaurant, and then call Jordy in here for a taste test with both of us. I'm so excited. exactly the same. Their mole was a lot darker. Mm -hmm. Their corn puree was a lot more yellow. Their poblanos were a lot more green, so I think that they blanched them. Mm -hmm. Their salsa was more red than green. Um, their batter was darker. This is so crazy that you made every piece of this. I made every piece of it though. I'm really proud of you. Mezcal batter. Mm -hmm. I should have made the flays longer. Mm. That's like, that is 90% there. Really? Yeah. 90? That's very generous. Yep. The only things, honestly, the tortilla is just as good. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Their quality of fish was better. Mm. I'm sure they get first pick somewhere in town. Oh yeah. Michelin? Mm -hmm. I'm sure they do. Fishelin. Fishelin. <laughs> Overall, this really is an incredible fish taco. Mole is really nice. I did it very smoky. Uh, it, it lacks the like whatever flavor makes it really, really dark, almost black. That's called three days of time. That makes sense. Well, that was really good. Hey, one whole day later, I made a taco. <laughs> I'm really proud of you. That was really awesome and super tasty. Thanks, babe. Well, we've officially finished our dinner, eaten all the different variations of the cod and just spoonfuls of the, the accoutrements, the mole, the salsa, the sweet corn puree. And I now need to start my real work day at six o'clock PM. So I'm gonna go ahead and end off this video here. But thank you for joining me for my first official episode of Michelin Impossible. Michelin Possible. Michelin? Okay. Michelin okay. I think today I would give myself a 6.9 out of 10. In college that is passing, in high school that is barely, barely failing. <laughs> That's where I feel like I, I'm right on the line of that today, but I'm excited to do more episodes of this in the future. Let me know your thoughts on the format. We'll continue to experiment with it as time goes on. But also let me know if there's any restaurants in the Southern California area. I'll go as north as LA that you would like me to try out and maybe continue on this concept. I'm excited because next Monday I am filming the six course fine dining style dinner that I am having several friends over as a birthday present to them. So. We'll see what comes of that. I love y'all. I hope you have the best rest of your day and I will see you in a video very soon.